Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Jay from Coding with Jaybird, where I upload weekly tutorials to help build your confidence in coding. Today we're going to be talking about how to build your very first web page. Let's get started, shall we? First, we need to download a code editor so we can build our web page. Now I'm going to choose Visual Studio Code as it's free and it's quite easy to use. So let's open up our Chrome browser. And here in Chrome, I'm going to navigate to code.visualstudio.com. And here I can see I have a download Mac Universal Stable Build available for download. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here you can see that the download has started on the bottom of the browser window. Now there are a few different ways to open the zip file that you've downloaded. One is to actually click on this .zip file here at the bottom of the browser window. Another would be if you had your downloads folder set up to come to your toolbar like I do here. Uh, the last option would be to open up your search at the top here of my laptop and do a spotlight search for downloads. And then it'll open up your downloads folder. And here you can see I have VS Code Darwin Universal .zip. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click this. Okay, and it's opened up Visual Studio Code for me here. So I'm going to double click on Visual Studio Code next. Now it's asking me if I think it's safe to open. Yes, it is. And there we go. Visual Studio is installed. It's as easy as that. Now that we've run through the installation process, we're all set and ready to create our first web page. So I'm going to start by making a folder on my desktop called my first web page. And you can see my desktop on the back here on the right hand side. So I'll just right click and say new folder. And I'm going to rename this untitled folder to my first web page. Now there's two ways we can open this folder in Visual Studio Code. One is to just drag it in here and it'll open it. Another is to actually go into the top of VS Code click on the file icon in the menu and select open folder. And here we can select desktop, my first web page and click open. And yes, I trust the authors of this file. And actually it's a good idea to uncheck this box. Otherwise you'll be seeing this welcome page on every startup. Okay. So here on the left hand side, let me make this a bit larger with command plus. Or if you're using Windows, it's Control plus on your keyboard. So here what we can do is we can open and close this Explore tab on the left by clicking on this first file icon. So if I click on that, it disappeared. And if I click on it again, it reappears. Okay, and then there's this down arrow. If I click on that, it expands the file folder or closes it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new file here. So we can create it by clicking on File, New File right here, or we can click on this new file icon, which is the first icon here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now it's usually a good idea to call this first file, which is typically a home page for a website, index.html. So we need that .html extension for VS Code to understand that we're making an HTML file. Okay, now we're going to be coding in here. So I'm just going to clean up some of this clutter. So I'll just click on this Explorer tab on the left just to get rid of that. And let's start coding in our file now. So the first thing that we must do is tell the browser that we are using HTML5 since there have been several versions of HTML till now. And we do that by writing the doc type declaration, which looks like this. Next comes our HTML document itself, and we start by writing an opening HTML tag, which has a left angle bracket, HTML, and a right angle bracket. Now this is followed by a closing HTML tag, which Visual Studio Code has auto-completed for us. So I'll just create some space here to show this to you. Now note the forward slash used for the closing tag, and that's how we know this is the closing tag. Our entire document will be written within these two opening and closing tags. So within this HTML element, which is also known as a tag. This is the root element since all the other elements are contained inside this element. Now the first element inside the HTML element should be the head element. So let's go ahead and create that. And again, we'll have our angle bracket, 
the word head and then we'll close that head tag and of course it auto completed for us and we can see our closing head tag is here. The head element should have one or more meta elements. These provide information or metadata about the document but aren't displayed in the browser for the viewer to see. I'm not going to write my left angle bracket right here for my meta tag, so let's delete that. I'm actually going to tab over and you can see that it says spaces four at the bottom of my window and that tells me that I've set my tab to four spaces. So you could also use the space bar and click it three or four times if you like. And then I'm going to type angle bracket meta space car set or character set equals and in here I'm going to have quotations with UTF-8 and then we're going to close this meta tag. So this tells the browser that the character set that is to be used is UTF-8 which is a super character set that contains over a hundred thousand characters from many modern languages. Now these include letters, numbers, symbols and so on. Now there are several other meta tags that can also be used such as author and keywords which I'll discuss in another tutorial. Now, the reason I tabbed over one is because the meta tag is nested inside the head element. So when we have an element nested inside another element like we do here, it's good practice to tab over so that you can visually see as a developer that this meta tag is sitting inside this opening and closing head tag. Now, every HTML page requires a title element within this head element as well. So I'm just going to hit return and here we're going to create a title element. Now a title element also has an opening and closing tag, whereas the meta tag doesn't. And that's because the title element has some content within it. Now before I write some text in the title, let's open this My First Web Page folder on the desktop on the right. And I'm going to right click this index.html and open it with my Chrome browser. So here I've opened up my index.html file locally on my Chrome browser. And what I want to show you is that the name of this file, index.html, is what's coming up in this tab at the moment. However, when I add a title in here, let's see what happens. So let's give this page a title of my first web page. And we can see that my first web page is now the title of the tab in the web browser. Next, we have our body element. And the body element comes after the head element. And once again, we have an open angle bracket, the word body, and a closed angle bracket. And then we need a closing body tag as we have here. Any elements written within these opening and closing body tags are displayed in the browser window for the end user to see. So let's create a simple heading next. And once again, I'm not gonna start the heading at the beginning of the line, I'm gonna tab over since this heading, which will be written as H1, and I'll get into that in the next lesson, this heading, H1, is going to be part of the content of the body element. Let's write my very first web page. After saving our HTML file, let's reload the browser. Yay, it works! My very first web page. So our H1 tag that we've created here is now displaying properly in the browser. Of course, it's locally stored on my laptop right now, but we could choose to upload this using a domain and hosting plan if we wanted to. That's it for today's video on building my very first web page. Next week, we're gonna get into some more topics on building up our HTML file. I hope you learned something new today and are enjoying my new HTML and CSS series. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for weekly coding videos. Until next week, keep on coding.